Good evening. Um, my name is Quinn Mann. I'm the vice chair of the South Burlington Development Review Board. Um, today is Tuesday, March 5th um, for one of our regular meetings. Um, happy town meeting day. Uh, I will begin by introducing our other board members. We have uh, Stephanie Weinman, John Moscatelli, and Charles Johnston. And for staff to my right, we have Marley Keene and Marty Gillies. Um, so before we begin, just a few housekeeping items. Uh, there's a few ways you can attend tonight's meeting. One of those ways is attending in person. We have quite a few folks in the auditorium with us tonight. You can also uh, join by uh, Zoom virtually, and you can also join by telephone. Whether you're in person or online, it's important that you sign in. Um, signing in allows you to seek interested person status. In this situation, you may want to an appeal decision. We ultimately decide tonight, um, or you know, not tonight, that we discuss tonight, rather. Um, if you're in person, you sign in in the back of the room. Um, if you are online, you can set, um, send your contact information through the chat, or you can email Marla Keen at mkeen, M-K-E-E-N-E, at southburlingtonvt.gov to provide her with your contact information to sign in. Um, and so that's making sure you sign in. Um, for those folks who are online or on the telephone, just a reminder to keep your micro, uh, microphones muted, cameras off, um, unless uh, uh, we recognize you to speak. And on that note, um, if you're attending and are looking to make comments on any of the items that are being dis discussed tonight, please note there will be a time for public comment provided um, at the end of that agenda item after the board has dis discussed it with the applicant. <clears throat> All right. And so moving to our first item. Uh, emergency evacuation pr procedures for those who are in the auditorium tonight. There's two doors, sets of doors behind you. In the event of emergency, go out either of those doors, turn right or left, you'll find yourself outside the building. Pretty easy. Um, agenda item number two, additions, deletions, or changes in the order of agenda items. So we will have a minor change to uh, the order of agenda tonight. Agenda item number seven is for the board to approve minutes from past meetings. We are going to move that up to agenda item number six. That's because one of our board members is recused from the item number six. So we wanna do that and allow that board member to um, leave so they don't have to stick around till the very end to approve the minutes at the end. So again, we will be moving agenda item number seven up to be agenda night item number six. And uh, agenda item number three, any announcements from staff or the board? No, nope. uh, I did invite the clerks to come in and tell us the results of the election if they so choose, but told them it was not required. <laughs> okay, sounds good. So if someone comes in looking like a frazzled clerk waving their arms, I wanna we'll pause them. for them. Yeah. Give us the announcement in real time. Um, very good. And then agenda item number four, comments and questions from the public not related to the agenda. Are there any of those this evening on first or anyone in person or online? All right, I'm hearing none. So we'll jump into the items we have on our agenda today. Uh, agenda item number five. Um, this is site plan application SP2404 and conditional use application CU2402 of the Roman Catholic Diocese of Burlington to amend a previously approved plan for a 126,875 square foot educational facility, also known as Rice Memorial High School. The amendment consi consists of reconfiguring and installing turf on the existing athletic fields, removing the existing track and bleachers, constructing new pervious walkways and other minor site improvements. And this is at 99 Proctor Ave. Uh, it looks like our applicants have found their way to the, to the podium, if you will. Um, and 
is it just you guys that will be talking for the applicant tonight or is there anyone else online or in the audience? Jeff, Chris. okay, sounds good. Um, and so if you could begin just by stating your name, association for uh, the record into the, um, into the microphone. Sure. Uh, <clears throat> my name's Andy Naj. I'm the principal of Rice Memorial High School. Welcome, thank you. And I'm Greg Dixon, the civil engineer on the project from Krebs and Lansing. All right. And then Jeff, can you, sorry, we're forgetting your last name. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And, oh, yes, and Ella. Excellent. Thank you. Um, and if all four of you could raise your right hand, we're just going to swear you in for this application. I think there might be one. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, I'm also Chris Hulk, the director of design and construction for Fieldter. Okay, excellent. Thank Chris, you. Could you say your last name again, just for the minutes taker? Yeah, Hulk, H-U-L-K. Thanks, Chris Hulk. Thank you. And um, right hands, excellent. Thank you, all five of you. Um, uh, so do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under penalty of perjury? Yes. Yes. Excellent. Thank you. All right. So we have a staff report here. Um, I am going to start by just chatting through a little bit of context here. There's yeah, oh, yeah, can I just sorry, make a quick recusal? disclosure. Yeah. Nope. Just a quick disclosure. Um, I previously worked with Chris um, at a firm many years ago, um, but I don't think that'll have an impact on my ability to proceed tonight. Excellent. Thank you so much. Sorry, I do forget to ask for that. Um, so the staff report we we have tonight, um, I know some of your engineers are kind of familiar with our process, but um, we have a staff report with items that um, need discussion outlined in red. We'll walk through those discussion points. So to begin, um, just to provide a little bit of context, because the staff report does focus on kind of a distinction that needs to be made here with um, the purpose of, of the athletic field. Um, and, and there's a little bit of nuance to that. So the uh, existing development is in residential zoning district four. So um, the current use of educational facilities is as allowed as an educational or as a conditional use. Um, and the educational facility uh, is a facility used for or in support of education, instruction, or research in any branch of knowledge. So there are existing athletic fields on site, um, as we noted with the project description. And so this, uh, the, um, the, the way they exist currently, uh, there's a relationship of the fields with the users of the educational facility um, and a distinction uh, I just want to make before we jump into the staff report is the residential zoning district four prohibits outdoor recreation facilities, um, which are defined as commercial recreational facilities for activities wholly or partially outside of any building structure. So um, that is a certain type with commercial recreational facility that would be prohibited in this zoning district. Um, and again, this distinction will kind of come up some of the comments that, that we're gonna address. So just wanted to set the stage a little bit. Um, and with that, um, so I'm just gonna read the first comment we have here. Oh, yes, thank you. Um, so sorry, and before we begin, uh, into the comments, could you just provide a brief overview of the project that you're proposing here? Yeah, so um, what Rice is intending to do is to kind of take away what you can see right now as the um, as the circular oval track, as well as the baseball field, and those would be rebuilt using a turf synthetic grass product. Um, and it they would bring back the football field and the baseball field. So they would still be fields, but the track would, uh, would not be part of this project. Uh, there will be some walking paths and um, some other amenities. We have worked to make all of those uh, pervious. Uh, so this is actually a net drop in, in impervious surface as we have uh, designed it. And yeah, there's not, too much more than that. 
unless you had anything to add, but. Yeah, I mean, it would just end up creating a much more consistent, reliable, dependable, um, durable surface for our student athletes to be on. And um, it would just be a nice upgrade for them and just be a, a field or a set of fields that we could depend on more. Okay, excellent. Uh, and I know I jumped the gun a little bit, but um, does before we jump into the um, comments, uh, anyone on the board have any clarifications or questions on the overview provided before we jump in? Okay, excellent. So I'm gonna read this first comment. Um, staff recommends that the board and applicant discuss the envisioned usage of their turf field space as it relates to the definition of educational facility and outdoor recreational facility. The zoning district standards, which prohibit outdoor recreational facility in the residential uh, for zoning district. So as a reminder, the connection of um, defining this these athletic fields as an educate part of an educational facility is a relationship to to the students in, in the um, educational uh, establishment. So um, if you could speak to the intended use um, of the fields as upgraded. Sure, the intended use would be um, exactly what we're using them today uh, to play football, uh, field sports like soccer, lacrosse, baseball, uh, field hockey, um, so as an educational facility for our students. Um, and so this, I think, you know, ties directly into comment number two, which um, it's our understanding that um, there's some historic usage um, of the existing athletic fields that might be outside of um, that criteria that have a direct relationship to the student body. So um, are there any um, existing tournaments or that sort of thing that are hosted on the field, uh, on the fields currently that you would like to continue to have that opportunity to do moving forward that might not fit that educational facility definition? We don't have any existing tournaments beyond the tournaments that we already, or beyond the um, games that we already host there, um, you know, as part of the VPA. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I think, yep, go ahead. So what you're saying is you don't host activities beyond what is considered a school event on the fields. That's correct. Not used to sitting in this position, so I forgot. Okay. Um, all right, I think with that, we can move down. Carla is doing. Um, so this next comment is related to this same kind of distinction of, of use of the field. So uh, we will be looking to craft a condition that clearly prohibits the outdoor spaces from being used in a man manner that fails to comply. Um, with what's allowed for this conditional use. Um, so that would be prohibiting the school from, um, you know, uh, renting out this space um, for a fee for some purpose that is not serving the student body. And so it sounds like you don't have any intention of doing it that. So I think we have all the information we need to draft such a condition. Is that correct? Or do you guys feel that way? Yeah, I think just for the board's consideration, um, I did receive an email from someone on the applicant team, uh, Jill, who wasn't sworn in, but is here. Um, and so that's in the supplemental folder. And it was just a, it was like a draft um, condition um, that was just for the board's consideration. Certainly not something that you have to adopt verbatim or have to adopt it all, but just worth, I think, speaking into the record um, is that we received this. And so this is just the applicant's um, first crack at, a condition like the one suggested to, to be created as part of comment number three. So no need or no pressure to, 
to make a decision on this now. Obviously, this is just something to take under advisement at this time. But if you have questions following up, that's that'd be a good time to do. I guess just one thing to expand on: uh, being a an archdiocese facility, there's no intention of bringing in any other groups from outside part of the archdiocese, but outside the school that would partake of the use of the field as well. Strictly rice. That's correct. Strictly what we're using it uh, currently for. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't have any other further comments on this proposed condition. Anything else from the board? No. There's one other one. Uh, is there any intention to uh, significantly expand the athletic offerings at Rice, which would incur greater field usage? Um, right now, there's no plan to do that. Um, currently, uh, the teams that we have fill up our fields quite well, and this actual turf field is going to help us out a lot. Um, and again, just to clarify, you know, the existing uh, activities that we have on the field that are all educational and are already happening, those are the only ones that we'd be having. We wouldn't be adding anything new to that. Great. Thank you. Yes, we appreciate the emphasis of, of that clarification. Um, so with that, I will move on to comment number four. Um, so this is regarding what the final grade might look like on the site. So, um, you know, there'll be some excavation of the space needed to establish that sub base to support the, the field and the drainage and everything. Um, so on sheet 1.01 uh, .01 that I believe Marla has just brought up for us, it states final grades in this area may vary based on amount of excess fill from the project. So. Uh, we just wanted to hear from you kind of what that variation might look like. If you could um, speak to putting more bounds on that, um, just if you could. Yeah, so right now, if you go out to um, this field, basically you can see that the parking lot and the school sit a little bit lower than the existing fields right now. Uh, and there's a little slight slope up to them. And uh, our point with sort of that note in that area would be that we would extend that slope a little bit closer to the field. So effectively, it wouldn't feel a whole lot different, um, but it would be a place to store excess fill. Um, obviously, we're taking away a lot of material to dig out the field and put in this turf and the stone and stuff that will support the field. Um, and we're hoping to keep a lot of that material on site and not have to truck it off. Um, so that area, we're kind of looking to take up with some excess fill. Um, so it will, it could be a difference of three to four feet, but I don't think it would visually look different. Um, it would just sort of blend in kind of as the hill does today. We're not, it won't be like a mound. Right. Okay. Yeah, I think um, maybe the, the one consideration I would have is, you know, our stormwater team did work with you on this one and, and reviewed this project. Um, and so I just, you know, I don't know if changing the slope at all would, would be of any interest to them, but I guess that's something that I would be curious, uh, you know, on their feedback on, I guess, or if you could define the parameters a little bit yep. tighter, uh, or I don't know. So I, I haven't heard back from Stormwater yet. I did reach out to see if they have uh, come up with anything. Uh, right now, the steepest that I know it looks really steep in that little section there, but those are still four or five on ones, which is a pretty gentle slope. Uh, it'll still be grass. I don't expect there to be any extreme erosion or anything like that. I'm also not changing the hydrology of the area. It This is a high point. The fields are a high point. It slowly drains down to a low point down by Proctor Ave. So it's effectively keeping the same hydrology. It would just sort of be uh, a place used to, to tuck and fill. Um, and we could try to gentle up that slope um, as much or as little as uh, the board like. Uh, the only reason I was showing it a little bit tighter is is so we could limit uh, some of that disturbed area. Uh, but you could push that slope, make it more gentle even, and and fill more of that area. Okay. Um, thank you. Anything else from the board or staff? Okay. Great. Uh, so the next item um, is about potential protections for a, an existing 12-inch tree um, that's on the west uh, 
side end of the existing track. Um, so could you speak to um, any potential protections that might be put in place to ensure that that tree is preserved in the midst of grading and, and all that, even though it's not directly in the project area? Yeah, I tried to limit the scope of grading. Uh, if you kind of zoom in on, I, I don't think that's a, it's it's further north. So yeah. This. It does. <laughs> tree, great. And actually, the tree doesn't look like a tree. It looks like a circle with a dot in the middle of it. Okay. But I tried to limit, um, you can see the, the grading sort of ties into existing grade at that location. Uh, so we won't be adding fill around the base of the tree uh, and we won't be removing material from around the tree. Um, it is a 12 inch tree, uh, normally 12, the caliper of the tree can sort of give you an estimation about the root ball as well as the, the canopy of uh, the tree. They're normally pretty consistent of inches to feet so basically the root ball would be about 12 feet and so is the the bulbous of the tree um we can we'd be happy to put some erosion prevention and sediment control around that sort of at the limits of the root ball uh 12 to 15 feet sort of diameter around that uh tree okay and just for moving forward with that that's we wouldn't need an updated plan. That's just a condition we could write in specifically around that. Okay, great. Um, any other comments from the board? Right. And moving on to comment number six. Uh, so we were anticipating updated stormwater comments. Sounds like we're still waiting on those. Yeah, it's a fact. Um, Next. So I don't know. I guess I don't know. I don't know procedurally, Marla. Like what that means for sure. Um, so the board can't accept new information after the hearing is closed, including from internal city departments. Um, do you have you or Greg have any sense like if their comments are likely to be something substantive? I I can explain sort of what we went through to develop the stormwater if that would give the board a better feel of what we're playing. Have you talked to our city stormwater department at all though? Yes. Okay. And it, what was their initial feedback like? Um the fact that we were reducing the impervious surface and doing a heavy amount of pervious paver, I think was I got a yes, we're very excited about that sort of email from I believe Melissa. Yeah, I talked to Marisa as well and she um she said that she was trying to get to this you know, ASAP, but it seemed, it sounded like she was going to formalize some some off the cuff comments, but it didn't sound substantive to me. Okay. The the level of um, review. Okay, so here's what I would recommend in this case, since it sounds like the conditions might be sort of like um, EPSC related or um, you know small detail related. The city stormwater ordinance applies regardless of whether the DRB has issued a decision on the project or not. Um, if they were saying that the stormwater standards of the LVR weren't being met, I would have more concern, but it sounds like it might be details that are covered by the stormwater ordinance. So I think that the board can probably proceed and let the stormwater department cover stormwater related stuff. Does that sound okay? I mean, I hate to like steamroll a city department, but it sounds like, you know, they had the opportunity and um, the comments aren't anything to worry about. I mentioned one other thing that could help your decision. Um, this project is going through the Act 250 process, so it will also be looked by at by state uh, entities. Uh, it will have a state erosion prevention and sediment control permit required, and um, there's an existing stormwater permit on this site. Um, so state stormwater will also look at it. So I think it's going to kind of go through quite a few stormwater if segments. the city stormwater department does have big big questions they can request you know reconsideration okay just like an applicant could request reconsideration um, for information that came to light after a hearing was closed overall you've reduced the uh, runoff from the site yeah we've reduced the impervious surface by almost 0.7 acres and uh and you have more infiltration than you did before yes Uh, so 
it's a, it sounds like we would be in the position of closing the hearing with a small it sounds like potential low risk, low risk yeah. for the um, stormwater department to ask for reconsideration. So yeah. that that sounds fair. Um, great, thank you. Uh, so moving on to comment number seven. Um, this is about the requirement around bicycle storage. Um, so it looks like um, at this point, uh, the applicant has indicated that the capacity of Rice is um, 500 students. So based on the LDRs, this would require require 25 short-term bike parking spaces. Um, the current uh, plans propose nine new uh, bike racks or bike, yeah, storage racks. And then there's a new location of an existing schoolyard uh, bike style rack. So I think for, so um, just going to read this now, that's context. Staff recommends the board require the applicant provide as a condition of the approval, a table calculating the planned capacity of the existing educational facility. So, you know, a revisit at that 500 number in case it's different at all, just confirming that the number of short-term bike parking spaces required, and then an inventory of all existing and proposed short-term. Um, I think maybe it's just not clear what is fully on the property currently. Um, and then demonstrating that it will meet that minimum requirement. And again, this could be a condition of approval um, that you could provide afterwards, right? Yeah, and, and Greg actually did get this to me even ahead of oh, this meeting, yeah. so yeah. you're on top of that. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so it sounds like you're okay with providing that because you already did. Mm -hmm. um, and we're, we'll make sure that's all in compliance. Sorry, is that something in supplemental that you wanted me to pull up? Uh, if you want to, yeah. I mean, it's just, I think I maybe miscounted when I wrote this staff report, um, but it was just exactly what I had asked for in the condition of approval, just laying it out pretty simply. Um, just the numbers and the locations. So. Okay providing the detail needed to confirm that there will be enough bike parking on the property. Well, now I'm curious and I want to look at the plans. Oh, it's just a picture. It's just a picture, right. but, but this is, this, this is not the plans. Yeah. There's, there's, a, there's a, what 13, 14 new U racks going in. And that's an existing one, right? And that's yeah, yeah, why yeah. that yeah. one's allowed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So there's, I, I think there's going to be a collection of two sort of spots out by the field, one by the baseball field, one by the football field. And then we added a very larger one kind of closer to the entrance of the school. Right. Great. And again, we we uh, designed a pervious uh, way to put those in. Very good. Um, all right. That brings us to the end of the red comments. Um, I did just feel like it might be worth noting um, the last point that's not in red about exterior lighting. So. Um, there's no new or revised exterior lighting um, proposed at the time of the application. A lot of times, you know, that is in conjunction with a turnover to a turf field, so um, worth highlighting. Um, Marlo Marty, is, could you also speak to if there's any restrictions because this is a conditional use of any potential future lighting or just speak to that just so I know we have members of the public here as well. Sure. Yeah. So as a conditional use, um, any amendment to a conditional use also triggers a conditional use application. So because rice exists as a conditional use, anytime rice wants to do pretty much anything, they need to come in for a conditional use. Um, conditional uses are board applications. They cannot be done administratively. So there is no real mechanism for us to approve anything to happen at rice without coming to the board here. Um, anything of significance beyond a zoning permit. Um, you know, to do like a wall or something. So uh, the conditional use process always involves public hearing and installing exterior lighting is A, not currently permitted based on the zoning district and B, even if it were to be permitted or if Rice wanted to submit an application anyway, that application would have to come before this board and be warned as um, this meeting was warned. So that process is is non-negotiable um, and, and as, as Quinn no noted, um, not part of this application. And just to touch on that similar thing, if they increase the, you know, sound system or something to accompany, again, sometimes what we see with turnover to turf field, all of that would fall into that as well, just to kind of 
emphasize those pieces that aren't proposed currently. Um, but if at any point where they would come back to this board in a public process. So, uh, and um, so we worked through the staff report. I think we have some members of the public here that might wanna make comments um, before we take public comment. Do you have any closing um, remarks or notes you wanna? Uh, not much, thank you guys for considering us. Uh, we did want to ask if there wasn't a whole lot of pushback about the project, if there was an opportunity to waive uh, the appeal period, uh, just because we are kind of tight on time, but uh, that's just a question, uh, it's not. Yeah, absolutely. So the appeal period um, for a DRB decision is 30 days. Um, that can be waived uh, with the signature of the applicant, uh, property owner, and all interested parties. So that'd be most of the folks in the audience here tonight would all qualify as interested parties. So if you could get signatures from everyone here, and I guess those participating online as well. It's only people who have participated in the hearing. Oh, sure. Okay. So so those so people So if you're here comment. and you don't care, then and you don't say anything, then they don't have to get your signature. And, and is there a chance we could just get the list sort of later on next week or something like that. Yeah, it should, I mean, it should be, um, yeah, everyone sure. should have signed in. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah, of course. Oh. All right. Um, I could just, oh, want, yeah. uh, one, oh, one other thing and just emphasize that, you know, again, we're focusing on pre-existing uses of the fields and, you know, we do have situations where, you know, some of our diocesan, diocesan schools have already been using the fields Nothing else is changing beyond that, but you know they will probably still be using them for those particular situations. Excellent, thank you. Yeah, and thank you very much for everything. Yeah, thank you. All right, so this is the point um, where we would take public comment. Um, I'm gonna start with the folks that are in the room. Um, if you would like to make a public comment, um, you can use this podium that's to my right or left, um, and you can come on up or if you have questions, yep, do you have, do you want to, yeah, and we just have to have you use the, yep. Um, and when you get up um, to the podium, it, yep, could you just state your name and if your address, um, just so we know your relationship to the project. Um, I'm Lonnie Robbins and I live um, at 69 Joy Drive in the condos that are mm -hmm. butted up to uh, this pro the property line where the, I'm assuming where, where the new, um, turf is going to go. I have a question about runoff. If we were to have a significant snowstorm, rainstorm, where does it go when it melts? How would all of that water and moisture be accounted for? Um, sorry, just for clarification of public process, we typically how this runs is um, make comments and um, we're going to be making decisions on it so you can direct comments to us okay. you can um ask questions of the applicant they're not obligated to respond but um just the nature of it is you should try to direct your comments to to the board oh okay, okay. yeah All right. i was just but yeah, yeah no no your design of it and the materials yeah, yeah yeah and so since since you did direct that if the applicant has a response um go right ahead but that was just more of a general um for everyone so thank you so yeah, this this entire property is under an existing uh, state stormwater permit. And so the whole thing kind of, the high point of the property is kind of over by the softball field. Mm -hmm. And it kind of all internally drains into this, towards the school where it's collected in either um, catch basins or drain manholes and stuff like that. And actually directed um, around the building. Marla, if you could kind of go to the corner where it meets uh, Proctor Ave on the. Oh, you might have to go to the first page. Sorry, I'm zoomed out. So, so recently, Rice, um, with the city, uh, developed a stormwater pond. It's going to be a gravel wetland. Um, sorry, it might be on the next page. Then send you in circles. And so you can kind of see the limits of the grading on, on this plan up in the top left-hand corner. And so the intent is that this, this really wouldn't change that hydrology. The whole project would still 
go in that direction and be collected in that stormwater treatment system, it would now just be receiving 0.7 acres less of impervious than it was designed for. Um, but that is how the whole property drains kind of from the high point up where the softball field is down towards Proctor Street. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Um, any more comments from anyone in the audience? Yep, you can go right ahead to the podium. And again, just a reminder, when you get up there, if you could state your name and your address, it's helpful yeah. for us. Hi, I'm Kelly McClintock. I am the field hockey coach at Rice, along with the lacrosse coach. I don't know much about the building and X's and O's. These guys are amazing in what they do, but I wanted to just get up and advocate for um, my athletes, especially the female athletes. Um, our field hockey field at Rice is not legal. We can play home games there, but come playoff time, if we are a top seed, we never can host. So there is no home field advantage. Um, we've won multiple championships, but we never can host a home game. Um, and especially representing female athletes, it's a killer, you know, to see all the male sports get to have home games or playoffs and females not. Uh, I want the best for the female athletes. Some would say, well, why not just play on top of the football field? Well, football cleats dig a lot deeper. Field hockey, you need a flat surface. So those surfaces don't work out well to share the space. And this would solve a lot of problems. And then with lacrosse, um, we've had many seasons where we're four weeks in the gym because we get unexpected snowstorms and we've had games where our first time on the field is our first game, which doesn't necessarily set our um, athletes up for success. And I'm just here to advocate for our athletes and wanting the best for, um, especially the female athletes, is, we provide immense opportunity for them. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, anyone else in person in the audience want to provide comment? Yep, come on up. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, if you in the front want to come and then we'll bring you up. Let's see. I am Jam Mahoney and 69 Joy Drive. I'm on the east side of the football field. So um, I'm just wondering, you're taking down the bleachers. Um, how are people going to watch the football games? Uh, what are you putting up? Are there any plans for viewing the games? Oh, can I go with the applicant as well? If you don't mind responding, you don't have to. <clears throat> I, I think we, we do show a few sort of sporadic bleachers around. Um, we've also developed sort of a in-between area in between both the uh, football field and the baseball field uh, where people can stand and watch. But that large bleacher complex is, is proposed to be taken out and, and not put back in. Is there a reason for it being taken out? It's just it's mostly because we needed the space to fit it in for the turf. Ah, uh, yeah, to fit both of the uh, the fields in. Okay, and some safety concerns as well. Yep. Hi, uh, my name's Jonathan Kwong. Um, I have one child at Rice and soon to be two and a third one coming eventually. Um, I wanted to advocate for the field, um, for the baseball reason. Um, the, in Vermont, the baseball season is very, 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 very short. And this field will really help aid the students at Rice to get on the field much earlier. Um, anyone that's been part of a baseball season here knows that it starts late April at the best. And then um, sometimes you get pushed off the field, even in the middle of the summer um, or in the middle of the or the end of the end of the um, season because of weather. Um, these fields um, are so well designed to 
get rid of water and uh, allow people to be able to play on them early in the year. Um, the rice boys will start practicing um, about, I think, April or March, March 18th, and they'll be in the gym all the way until game one, which is whenever they let them outside. Um, so this field is going to allow them the opportunity. You know, today is a beautiful day. They could have been outside playing on that field today, uh, but they wouldn't be allowed to do that if they don't do the upgrade to to, um, to turf. So I just want to advocate for the baseball players. Thanks. Excellent. Thank you. And I didn't see anyone other hands, but just want to going once, going twice for folks in the audience. Um, and then with that, is there anyone online, um, members of the public, if you want to make a comment, please make that known. How Joel, do I do? Go ahead. Oh, can, can my, my audio? We can hear you. Okay, great. Uh, Joe Larkin, um, I'm, I'm a South Burlington resident, a Rice grad, and I'm in support of this project. Um, I, full disclosure, I'm on the project team to help get it this far. Um, I just, as we discuss um, sort of limiting use on the field and understanding that it is a conditional use and that we don't want this to be a recreation facility, I just ask the board and to deliberate and think about um, uh, an old sort of a flexible approach to, to limiting the space. I, Rice, uh, in my mind, does not need to use this as a recreational facility or broader, but I, the idea of fields sitting empty um, when they can be being used by the broader community as well, if it makes sense for Rice, um, is something I want to caution against. I, I, suppose, I suspect Rice would be fine with limiting use to only Rice student athletes um, and, it, it, you know, maybe some under schools, but I, I think we want to make sure that we balance that so that these fields can become um, a broader resource. So that's just a thought as I, as I've been working on this. Great. Thank you. Not seeing any other online commenters. Oh, Ben. Um, yeah. Uh, that last comment just got me thinking, you know, Could I don't you know just, how that. Oh, sorry. Just, I guess your name's on. Could you state your name? Sorry. Oh, yes. Sorry. <laughs> um, Benton Taylor and I live at 69 Joy Drive as well. Um, Go ahead, sorry. Sure. The The last comment just got me thinking about, you know, if the the way that Rice uses the field or, you know, if they were to rent it out to other teams, programs, whatever, how like the excess noise, excess traffic, and that might affect the people that do live behind those fields. Thank you. All right. I don't think we have anyone else online. Um, and with that, pub, with all those public comments, I think we are in the position to close this hearing. We're not waiting for anything else. No. Um, I have a motion to close. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I moved to close. Do you have a second? Second. All right. Um, all those in favor of closing, say aye. 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 Uh, against, abstain. Motion carries. Uh, hearing's closed and you'll be hearing from us. Thank you. Thank you. I'll just pull up the minutes. Yes. And as a reminder, we're just going to quickly um, approve some minutes. So there are, I believe, two sets of minutes. There's the December 5th and there is January 17th. Any edits or comments on the draft minutes we have? All right, doesn't sound like it. So I'd entertain a motion to approve. Move to approve. Second. Excellent. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Abstain? Motion carries for approval of the minutes. Thank you. Uh, and that leads us to agenda item now number seven. And we might have some 
unfortunate news on this front. I don't know if you guys were already counting while you're in the audience, um, but Stephanie is recused and that means we do not have a quorum. And uh, unfortunately that means we can't hear this project tonight. So we also cannot vote to to continue, to continue. Either, right? but what that means is staff basically gets the authority to decide when to continue it to okay um the only thing on the next agenda is that site plan initial or site plan for yeah, cheap. so i think that the next hearing should be fine okay we apologize for that we um, we're not anticipating not having a quorum otherwise we would have so can you guys be here on the 19th i i can but won't speak for oh harry looks sad in the back there <laughs> yeah that's fine i was doing the math in my head going yeah. is this gonna happen? we were holding out oh maybe <laughs> I, I think the 19th we can make the 19th work okay so we'll reschedule you for the 19th um and i don't anticipate any form issues that night yeah okay and then is it i'll i was planning on being here later so if you guys want to hang out and talk master plan stuff for a couple minutes after the meeting i'm happy to do that yeah if you want to take that opportunity to like clean up any lingering stuff so you have a really fast hearing on the 19th absolutely well i just, I just meant like the next 10 15 minutes too if you yeah, yeah. Okay. all right well thank you very much i guys at least kind of had an reason for coming this evening <laughs> <laughs> spoke too soon thank you <clears throat> All right, and so we do not need to vote to close, but I will say the meeting has closed at, or ended. I don't adjourned. Thank you. I forgot the language. Um, the the meeting's adjourning at seven forty six p.m.